Welcome to part five of five on chapter three, the chemical basis of life two. This section is gonna be looking at the final type of organic molecule, the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, they are responsible for the storage, expression, and transmission of genetic information. So nucleic acids, since they're so important to cells. I'm just going to quickly go over the very basics of nucleic acids, but we have a whole chapter later on in the semester devoted to the DNA and RNA, so our nucleic acids. So we're just going to talk about deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. This molecule stores the genetic information, and it's coded in the sequence of their monomer building block. So very basically, DNA just has that genetic information or blueprint for our different traits and characteristics. The other type of nucleic acid is ribonucleic acid, or it's called RNA. Ribonucleic acid, there's a few different forms and different functions, so it's involved in decoding DNA information into instructions. And then those instructions are used to link together a specific sequence of amino acids to form a polypeptide chain. So hopefully that makes sense if you just watched the um, lecture on the proteins. So again, um, RNA is just used to express that genetic information and to help make all of our different proteins. The monomer for the two different types of nucleic acids is called a nucleotide. A nucleotide, it's composed of three main parts. So you have a phosphate group, which is one of those functional groups. Attached to the phosphate, you have a five carbon sugar in the middle. And then the third part of the nucleotide is a base and it's made up of nitrogen atoms and there's different bases that we're going to look at. In DNA nucleotides, the five carbon sugar is called deoxyribose. So you have deoxyribose sugar. And then the four different nitrogen bases you can have are going to be cytosine, guanine, adenine, or thymine. I've highlighted the parts that you're going to find in a DNA nucleotide shown here on the slide. RNA nucleotides, for their 5 carbon sugar, you have a ribose sugar, and then the four different nitrogen bases, you're either going to have cytosine, guanine, adenine, or uracil. In your DNA and RNA molecules, you have your different nucleotides, which are made up of that phosphate group, the sugar, and one of those four nitrogen bases. Those nucleotides are going to be connected together using, again, that dehydration or um, condensation reaction that we've been discussing. And the bond that forms is called a phosphodiester bond. So that's the bond that's going to hold your different um, nucleotides together. In DNA, DNA is usually found in a double strand and it twists together to form the double stranded helix that's shown at the top. So you actually have two DNA strands and they're going to be going in opposite directions from each other, but those DNA strands are going to complementary base pair with each other. So if you look on the side, if you find the thymine, that thymine is going to hydrogen bond with an adenine on the other side. So thymine and adenine always have that complementary base pairing going on. 
cytosine and guanine, those two are also going to base pair with each other, so you have hydrogen bonds that are going to hold the cytosine to the guanine. So DNA, you're always going to find it in this double strand shown here. RNA, on the other hand, you usually find that as a single strand, and RNA comes in multiple forms, and we'll get to the multiple forms later on when we get into genetic um, information and how it's actually expressed in the cell. So like I mentioned, this section is very, very short on nucleic acids because we're going to have pretty much a whole unit just on nucleic acids and what they look like, um, and we'll kind of review this information again, but you'll learn a lot more about them later on.